how's everyone's week doing then? Is this a recording test? No, I'm, I'm not actually just <laughs> okay. asking, asking for real. Um, let me start sharing my screen as well. Um, I mean, I have started recording just because it, it's probably easier, and I think I have plenty of space. Yeah, 120 gigabytes free, that should be enough. So... I find it funny. So when I when I go to I have the graphics codex in my like history and it's not the actual codex, it's like the selling page for it that used to be where you could, you know, links to where you can buy it. But I don't know how to get to the actual graphics codex except for clicking on the picture of a phone, which happens to bring me to where I want. And I'm never quite sure what else to do. Um, are we doing materials this this week? I think we are. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think JB or. Leslie will be here today. So, is it already 7.08? Wow. Uh, yeah, we're covering materials. Um, well, I guess, I guess we should get started. I'm going to pour myself a spot of mint tea that I had put on before sitting down. It's raining here, and it's like the first time we've had winter-ish weather for months now, because it was like 100 degrees last week. So this is a, a nice change of pace. Very cozy. It was very hot. Oh, yeah. Um, I can imagine. Okay. So light. D did you hear that Windows notification noise? Because I did. Nope. Wait, no. I think the recording would have heard it. But that's... Okay. Uh, light scatters when it hits stuff. We got our BSDF function to model that. No, don't. Okay. They didn't want that. Okay. Um, in the units of watts over meters, surface area, and steradians from the beam of light. This is our f of x of n omega i omega out. The scattering function. So surface is in the interface of homogeneous media um, so we talked about the geometry of a surface now we're going to talk about the material of a surface um, and its properties we have a scattering function f of x comma, n, and two techniques. Bump mapping and partial coverage. Oh, alpha. Okay. So... Curious about the alpha. Oh, well, that's that's just um, alpha, cu uh, alpha cutoff. So I, I, I have a s sneaking suspicion it's referring to geometry, which is alpha cut alpha textured so it, it's like leaves you, you have the shape of the leaf and everything that's not colored in is invisible that's my guess we'll find out though do those i mean maybe this is maybe too much of a tangent but do, when you do that do you basically just do you typically have it so the ray goes through the surface or do you have it so that like when it hits the surface you look up the alpha and then like send out another ray to continue it behind it or something um, that's a very good question. I've only considered or thought about alpha transparency when talking about rasterization, where there is no such thing as a ray. You just are doing surface uh, triangles. In that um, case, would you just kind of like discard the current pixel? So uh, alpha as coverage, it's 
Um, so it, it's it's meant to represent like a percentage of that complete material being present in that in that uh, sample. So if you have like a, a leaf and at the edge of the leaf, one of those uh, fragments might be like 40% alpha. And that doesn't mean that, uh, it, it means that that pixel is covered by 40% of the full material and 60% of no material. So so that's a, maybe another way to think of it. And, and that yeah. that's when you hear of alpha as coverage, that's what they're talking about. So I guess in that case, you would do the normal material and then also send a braid through behind and then kind of mix the two based off the coverage. Correct. Yep. Uh, okay. So it's not what I was thinking earlier. Uh, what I was thinking is something you'd have implement with any hit rather than um, with uh, what's going to be described. Like in the ray tracing pipelines of Vulcan and DirectX, and you got different kinds of shaders for ray tracing. And um, some of them are the ones you'd use for transparent or uh, opaque, uh, not not tra opaque, but uh, translucent surfaces or volumes. So it'd be the same, right? You'd do the alpha, well, you do the any hit and then apply some of the material and then like have the ray keep going. I don't know if you can do that. Well, so transmission and translucency are, are um, uh, different concepts than, than alpha. So you, you would never, yeah, you, you wouldn't in, uh, treat, uh, well, it's just a different material model. Um, and I, th if, I think it'll, it should talk about it in, in this section, I think. If not, we can, I'm happy to talk about it afterwards. I mean, it says it's going to cover it, so I s hope it does. <laughs> Okay, yeah. we got probability density. This is a crash course in statistics, probably. I mean, that wasn't a, supposed to be a pun, but it ended up being one. Uh, so... So scattering is a distribution of exiting radiance. Okay, so it's a continuous distribution, so it's we need to integrate, we're not summing. Also, it's not true probability because uh, some light will be absorbed. Um, so when we flip a coin, we have some outcomes. We model it with a probability mass. Um, so we can make statements about what would happen, like the probability of any die roll resulting in four is one in six, because the probability is equal on all sides. And of course, if you have a weighted die, this wouldn't be equal on all sides, but um, that's a tangent. Um, We're, we're mainly dealing with continuous probabilities, so we have a nice continuous function that describes a probability and the probability of any given height, uh, of any specific height is just the vertical line here, but of any range of heights is going to be the area under the curve, which is a fancy way of saying integration. I guess not fancy, but a different way. Um, probability density and differential probability. Ah, so the probability density is a specific vertical slice, whereas the probability mass is over a range. So, you know, the blue area here is the probability mass. Okay. Mm. Right, so probability mass should equal 1 because that's the probability of all possible outcomes and all possible outcomes any outcome is guaranteed to happen any outcome an outcome is guaranteed to happen and because we have the whole range it's just fine um 
That's... that is interesting. I hadn't considered that. So... The, the whole function integrated from a negative infinity to infinity must, you know, integrate to one, but you can still have asymptotes going, like, the, the function could go to infinity as long as it only does it at an infinitely small area, and it's still valid because the overall sum is one. That's, that's a thought I didn't think to have. Um, so we can have non-continuous functions in our probability density, as, as a probability density function. So, yeah. So if we were to graph a probability density function of a ball rolling down a hill and hitting a rough stone, we would say that it's most likely, you know, gonna fall down where the, the, the where it's highest on the axis and less likely the lower. Um, and since we want, we're want, we concerning radial directions, we don't really want to do it as a vertical slice physically, but as a um, direction relative to the surface. Um, you know, where th this is the rock, and probability den density is going outward from that. Okay. Now we just go from balls to photons, and then we have to consider the macro, the microscopic details. Um, so what might feel smooth might optically be very, very rough. Mm. Yeah, metals are reflective. Water, window glass, and dielectrics transmit visible light, so they just let it right through. Um, yeah, there there are various materials that, when heated or radiated with energy or with radiation, they'll release the energy at specific wavelengths. Um, I think it's a gas mantle. Uh, I'm just, just grasping at related things, but gas mantle uh, does the same thing where uh, no? No, it wasn't this. That says okay, I'm I can't remember it, but there is a type of gas lantern that phosphoresces rather than just emits light as heat or uh, light from the black body radiation, and it's it's very bright um, and much more bright than and much more efficient at being bright. Um, I just can't remember what technology it is. Oh well. Um, mm. Okay. Yeah, so the BSDF, the bidirectional scattering distribution function, is the thing we want to define. Mm. <laughs> the ratio of scattered radiance to incident irradiance. Oh, that's. Note the ray and irray here. Uh. 
So we got the function as defined before, but with units. So we have um, x being on the hemisphere, I would think. Or is that volume? n being on our surface, and then our incident light is on a surface, and our out outgoing is on a surface, and it's over these inverse to radians? Okay. Um, and it's the delta of light outgoing over the total incoming energy? Is that what that is? I'm trying to... Um, okay, we have L of S and that should be our scattering, and then we have our incident light, um, and then we have a, we have our dot product with with the normal and the. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the n dot l. Yeah. Yeah, the cosine fallout or whatever. What's weird? What's weird is that this is. Um, is this for a singular light source, or is this all light sources? I think it's all light sources. Okay. Well, for a given direction? Prob maybe for a given direction, that's what it's being defined as. Because... I'm trying to reconcile the fact that this kind of should be like a integral or something, but maybe this is what the that paper defines it as more than what we want to to mean for uh, the whole surface, like all the lights in the scene kind of surface. Well, um, this is just how much of the light from an incoming direction goes out in an outgoing direction. So you know it could what? be like every light source providing that incoming direction you're but. absolutely right because we have the function as defined as a uh, the two parameters are the incoming direction and the outgoing direction so right. given an incoming direction of a radiance how much is outgoing in a different direction right a and you have to do an integral of the f and i'm remembering last week we or two weeks ago i can't remember um where f was inside the integral or right so you in, would do yeah. that for every incoming direction right? yeah and for and you do it at every outgoing ray that you are considering well not usually right like wouldn't it I, I, sorry i just mean you whenever you do a ray test you hit the surface you do the integration on every incoming light source but every ray test also does it per incoming light source, so it's um, over the course of a, a whole ray, uh, a whole render. You'd be only considering it from the, the camera's perspective, but you'd still be considering it from many more than one outgoing direction. I think I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Um, surface is reflective. Okay, so reflective just means the light being scattered, it, all the light scattered is in the same hemisphere. Um, not, the, the incoming and outgoing directions are in the same hemisphere. Not that it has to be mirror, aka it reflects right light rather than transmit or absorbs it which is why this is the scattering distribution function and not the transmittance or other uh, types of things. Um, yeah, reflectance, that's... Mm. Okay, so reflectance is for the single hemisphere transmittance is for both hemispheres, and therefore the BSDF, the scattering, is for all directions. 
constrained by thermodynamics. Curse you, laws of physics. Uh, we can't have negative light or negative intensity. The sum of all the outgoing light, the sum, the integral of all the outgoing radiation. Is that the word for it? Or did it say it? Radiance, I, should, I guess, is less than one. Uh, not out, not the total amount, but uh, the the this pr this probability density function is less than or equal to one, and it's reciprocal, so that the. Is it just saying... Oh, God, girl. I think it could, like, do, like, backwards tracing and forwards tracing and eventually end up with the, with oh, the right thing. Right, right. Where you, you swap the I's and O's and you should get the same result if, if you go backwards or forwards. Um... It's important to know if you're going to render a lab scene. So passive material... Um... It's not adding energy into the scene? Is that what I'm getting from it? Yeah, I guess. And it's a... Not composite? So it's a single... Single material type, it's not too masquerading as one. Yeah, like I guess if you have like a you could theoretically have a material where like from a specific direction it's way brighter because you've like you know hooked up to <laughs> your generators and like Yeah. Half of each of them? Hmm. I guess because we only have to worry about income, in incoming to outgoing, and then we... We can do light transport backwards. Uh... Oh, that's that's a fair that's a fair point. Um, even though you can think of it in terms of individual photons, we're not actually modeling that. We're modeling the radiance transported by the photons. That's why we take the projected area of the incident beam on, into account with a dot product. So the radiance. Okay. Yeah, that does seem quite a hurdle to accomplish. Oh goodness, we're only a fifth of the way through the article and we've been here for like 20 minutes already. This is a long article. Um. A, we have the White Furnace, that I think we've talked about before. Maybe not in the recorded parts, though. Uh, 
That is interesting. That light could scatter from a surface more than once. Uh. Mm, yeah. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with the uh, uh, Learn OpenGL. Um, mm. It, it uh, so usually like the first um, approximation that was based off of uh, I think the SIGGRAPH 2013, uh, the Brian Karras mm -hmm. IBL talk. Yeah, so that's single scattering, and if you use that and um, you look at this at um, like white spheres in a white IBL, you'll notice that as you increase roughness, uh, you lose energy. Yes, like in that, exactly. Uh, um, you can see there's, uh, it should look like the column on the right where we have, you know, better energy uh, conservation, but um, due to energy loss, you get these dark spheres. Uh, if if you're only doing the single, single scattering. Oh, so, okay. That's what they meant by white furnace. Um, can you see the sphere around here? Um, it's not just the same as the background, where the ideally you do want it to be the same as the background because you're checking to make sure that the ener con energy conservation makes sense. Because um, it, it, it's like inside a box that's uniformly lit or a sphere, a uniform environment. All the light incoming from any direction is the same. So the light outgoing should be the same, but Fong and well, modified Fong? What is the oh okay, and so it shows an algorithm for stuff. Does this have pictures? That has some things. But yeah, okay, that's that's what you're talking about with Learn OpenGL, yeah. Um, I guess it's those, this, um, what does Patabong blog have to say about it? Um, it has a lot to say, but I want to see pictures. So this is kind of like, there, there are issues with our modeling of light, and this furnace test reveals that. Yes, yep. This this is a very common test test scene for verifying your energy con conservation. Yeah, because yeah, if you have a completely uniform incoming light, so the hemisphere is perfectly uniform in its probability density function for incoming light. Probability density function? No, uh, just the, the hemisphere is uniform. Then you're, you should scatter in each direct in e on the surface completely fine. Whereas here we have at grazing angles we're over or under scattering, over scattering. We shouldn't be getting this haloing effect. Uh, this is a. This seems like a good site for stuff. I'm gonna link it. I I also um, dropped a link. Uh, there's a really good. Uh, this is a great blog, or a great article on this whole topic. Okay, yeah, we got. This guy just he he pretty much did all, did all the legwork and research and and digest, put in a bit more of a digestible Ooh, form here. Okay. Yeah. Um. There's a lot going on. <laughs> it's a, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a reason these chapters tend to be as long as they are, is because they're introducing all sorts of things, and then we have these articles that actually get down to the brass tacks and uh, delve into the finer details, rather than just trying to introduce the concepts, um, which is what this graphics codex is doing, for the most part. Um, okay. Lambert's Law. Um, 
um, observed area of a locally planar surface is proportional to the cosine of the angle of incidence of the observer direction. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a very, um, very nice m analogy. Oh, oh, okay. So that's saying. cosine of the angle of incidence is the effective area of a planar surface. So, you know, the more you angle something, there's more surface to hit if you keep the incoming direction the same. Oh, that's... I kind of want to get a... Yeah. I'm trying to... It's... it's it's that n dot l term. So if you were to shoot a light at, you know, at, head on straight on on a surface, you'd get the full energy hitting that surface. But if you're hitting it at a grazing angle, as you approach parallel to that surface, you're gonna that's that fall off term there. Yeah, I was just trying to like. So we have like, you know. We have light incoming, and then our area is this. But if we have a very, you know, I don't think we can see what you're showing. You can't. Okay, well, it's recording it. It's just not sharing see, the screen. I can see your cursor over the <laughs> browser, but. <laughs> okay, let me just. Okay, uh, this. Okay, this fixes it. So. We we have our area here, and it's flat, and we got normal, or not the normal, but. Um, I'm just like thinking about it. We have the same incident angles here, but the area is, um, you know, the, the change in area is proportional to the the, the Lambert law because it, you're changing the the plane here, and so you know you got your theta and of the angle. And so, how much this area changes will is re relative to the, um, you know, the yeah, and the surface direction. Yeah. Uh, ooh, interactor. Oh, is this? I think this is okay. Uh, blah. someone linked what I think is. Yeah, I love this article. Um. It's a it's another article on with with amazing animation and sliders to better understand how light and mag, electromagnetic radiation and all those things work. Um, highly recommend uh, looking over it and playing with the sliders like I am, but also reading the text because um I'm just playing with the sliders. Whee! Um, yeah, thank you for linking that. Uh, blah. Okay. Um, So this is a explaining why we need to consider the Lambert law. Ah, okay. There's there's a relevant slider. Uh, wait, did I? Oh, where, where did it? The the where did I put? that tab I don't know 
think I never opened it. Okay. Uh... It's like roughly halfway down the page. A bit more than half. Uh, it's just the further you go, the smaller it gets. Yeah, here it is. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So, like, as the angle of incidence increases, you can see that the area tends to, you know, get much larger. But it's it's effectively spreading out the same amount of uh, radiance over a much larger area, diminishing its... Uh, intensity at a point. So yeah. Whee. Solid angle. Yeah. And it follows the cosine rule. So we use that for calculating the effective size of the effective area. Um So the magnitude of AE, which is this distance here, is equal to the cosine of AB. The, mag the magnitude of the cosine. Or the dot product of omega and N. Which is, whereas omega is the direction of the incoming irradiance. And N is the surface normal, the local surface normal. Because um, what, we, what we're doing is we're taking like if we're if we're looking at a surface we're typically only considering the area right around the surface and we assume it's perfectly flat in that area so it's the the local flatness of it 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 helps that the wavelength of light is microscopic like you know nanometers a couple hundred nanometers for the longest wavelengths of light and uh, micrometers are very, very small to the human eye. I don't think you could actually see one. Um, hair is like, I don't know, 20 micrometers in width or more. So all this stuff happened. We, we, can, can, we can approximate surfaces as flat because of just the, wa the wavelength of light is small enough that even... That it, it that it works out that it's an appro appropriate approximation, but also we do integrals and other things over areas, so that doesn't even matter because um, we can do it to infinity and beyond. Um, That's an interesting historical note. Okay. talking about the photon distribution versus the um, scattering terms last week after the, the recording or maybe during it I don't remember um, higher density of scattering points at glancing angles proportionally fewer photon photons so the, the black line is the density function, and then the blue curve is the photon distribution, because we, we have to take into account the surf, the scattering based off the angle of incidence. I apply Lambert's law. Um, talked about the many different types of materials, and they can be broadly categorized. We have retroflective, where the light incoming goes right back at the camera or the viewer, 
and you know this is a perfectly reflective whereas this one is mostly reflective and this is retro reflective paint is really cool or uh, not paint but well yes paint but applied to things that would not normally have light emitting from them like uh, high visibility clothing and uh, you know bicycle lights not lights but uh, reflectors like my bicycle has a strip of retro reflective paint on the wheel so it has this big dish of well almost blinding looking uh, retro reflection um, we got mirrors it reflects the light perfectly we got not perfect mirrors but they reflect the light in a in a direction that's like the mirror but not perfectly so it scatters it and blurs it a bit um, we have ones with multiple lobes rather than a single one. Um, we have generally diffuse materials, which is a lot of our daily objects have are, are relatively diffuse. You know, it scatters light pretty evenly, but with a lobe in the mirror reflection direction. We've got perfectly diffuse, which has no um, lobe in a in the direction of reflection. Um, we have some interesting, is this like satin uh, material? I, I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Yeah. It looks like it reflects to the sides more than it reflects uh, perpendicular to the normal, or I guess yeah. with the normal. Yeah, though with in this case of like this is like a couch cushion or something. Each one of these I, I, black dots are like that's where they're pinned to the back. So there's a crevice right here. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think it might be sheen. Oh, sheen. Yeah. Uh, sheen. Uh. Yeah, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Okay. Um. That was Maybe less than computer helpful. graphics. <laughs> oh. Yeah, every, every time I search for a computer graphics term, I am reminded that I need to be very specific if I'm searching for terms that are not specifically jargon in computer graphics, or exclusively in computer graphics. Um, but yeah, the sheen of a surface, she, a she, sheeny surfaces, uh, surfaces with a lot of sheen, um, will have a Lambertian, or, you know, will have a uniform reflectance out. Uh, anyways, we ha transmittive surfaces, uh, light goes through it. Sometimes there's lobes, sometimes it's like perfectly even. Uh, ooh, that's a good, looks like a good link. Uh, well, there's some very good examples of sheen. Um, satin, towel, wool, Red velvet. Mm. Very good. Uh, yeah, these are the, the the four broad categories: reflective and transmittive. Not category four, but uh, the the matrix. We got impulse slash specular, where it's extremely reflective um, to the point where the lobes almost a perfect line. Um, and then here we have infinite probability density, where we are. Uh, where we are um, assuming it reflects it perfectly or transmits it perfectly, whereas diffuse is the category where there is a lobe and a distribution function that is not a single direction. Um... Yeah, in natural language is difficult. And we, we, we have to be careful to be specific when we need want to be specific and to use the correct terms when we want to be specific. Um, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, but surfaces in the real world are often much more complicated because they're often not too 
they're, they're not a single uh, interface between two homogeneous media, but oftentimes many interfaces and sometimes not perfectly even interfaces. So, uh, like human skin is not a single interface. Uh, okay. So we're gonna go over these, so mirror reflection... Um, we just uh, reflect the incoming direction of the view towards the out... Uh, around the normal to get the outgoing direction. Um, some vector algebra and I'm trying to parse it. So we have the dot product of the view and the normal, so this is going to get us the magnitude. And we're multiplying that by the normal. And the normal could be assumed to be um, unit length. And then we're subtracting V from it. Projection, right? Hmm? Oh. It's like a projection of V on N, and then you subtract V, so I think that's going to reflect it. Oh! Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. Divide by zero is never a good sign. So, this big long section about mirrors not being possible in our current notation and a way to sidestep that feels, I don't know, is it physically possible for a surface to perfectly, I guess the um, answer is probably yes, but um, what's the... the, the I just this whole fe thing feels a bit of a like I, I don't quite 
get why we need to be so specific. I, I guess my gut reaction is that you can't have an infinitely small... Or you can't have actually perfect um, mirror surfaces. There's always going to be some imperfection, no matter how small. I, I guess I haven't really tried implementing this and found out that you can't do that and get a useful result. But um, We want to implement it. We got color, a direction, which is our incoming direction. Uh, Finite array of impulses. Evaluate finite density. Oh, that's got directions where it's a normal density function, but then you have some impulses where if you happen to be selecting those angles, look in the array of impulses to get the answer instead. Hmm. Okay. Both, basically? You have, like, the smooth part and then the impulse part? The You have the smooth part and the what part? This is... I mean, you, you have a collection of impulses plus the regular smooth stuff. Oh. Yeah. I, I think the Discord audio just cut out the word. Uh, impulse and greatly confused me. Oh. Um, okay. Transmission and refraction. So the opposite hemisphere has some non zero scattering going on. Oh, in the case of, like, uh, refraction, then, yeah, you would have, um, that, you know, perfect, that, that impulse. Uh, I hadn't considered, like, if I, I was so caught up with everything as a rough surface that I kind of forgot that even with rough surfaces we can have near-perfect, um, scattering through a medium. Or like through glass and whatnot. I'm looking at a cup of water right now in the real life and going, yeah, that's pretty darn good uh, reflection. Or not reflection, but uh, transmission. Refraction, there we go. There's a word for it. Um, pretty realistic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, thinking about upgrading my eyes so I get better graphics in the real world. So we got Snell's law, which is index of refraction is inversely proportional to this propagation of light within a medium. So in air, we usually assume the speed of light is the same as it is in a vacuum, because the air that we live and breathe in doesn't drastically affect the propagation of light, but water and all sorts of other things do uh, do change this propagation of light. Um, and so when light goes from air to water, it, well, follows the an angle, or its angle is proportional to the difference between air and water's uh, speed of light. Um, so like the, the incoming angle and the outgoing angle would be proportional to the difference of um, index of refraction, not the difference, the, 
difference? The uh, division. The ratio. The ratio. Yep. There we go. Thank you. Ratio of those two. We're reflecting the vector by the negative norm, the the well, the opposite of the normal. So it's this is slightly different than the mirror reflection, and then we have to subtract the uh, we have to to offset it based off the proportion of things. And is Q that proportion? Yeah, Q is the the ratio, the incident to outgoing media uh, index or refraction. Okay. Neat. Total internal reflection is very cool and is abused for fiber optics. Among other cool uses of physics. Mm -hmm. There's an imaginary part? Oh no. Oh, the extinction coefficient. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So we also want to model the absorption of a media in addition to the transmission, um, which is very useful. Oh, glass. Yeah. Glass and stuff. Yeah. Okay, um, does anyone mind if we cut it off here and finish the rest next week? Because I'm noticing we're only halfway through and it's been an hour. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Yeah, and I'm seeing microfacets, which is, I, I know enough about to know that it will take more than a couple of minutes to talk about. <laughs> so, and we, we got through some interesting discussion already with impulses and transmission and refra refraction. Uh, and I, a, an effective refresher on my physics two classes about optics, which talked a lot about index of refraction and various other things. Okay, I'm gonna stop my recording unless people have things they want to discuss about this chapter. I'll take that as a no, and uh, okay. <laughs>